Taking care of my patients has been the fundamental part of my dental practice over the last 10 years. When I speak to my patients, I find that dental pain is their biggest fear. And I believe that managing that pain before, during and after the procedure is fundamental to good clinical care. In this section, I'll try and cover what I think are good tips and tricks to gain effective pain management for my patients and your patients. The administration of local anesthesia is probably one of the most successful dental procedures that I carry out day to day. However, there are days that it doesn't work very effectively, and this could be because of multiple reasons. It could be because my technique is not very good on that day, or I've not given it enough time to work, or I've not given enough local anesthetic solution for it to be effective. And those are very easy to correct. Sometimes, in my rush to give local anesthetic, I give it too quickly, and that can cause pain for my patients as well. And therefore, it's very important to remember that we give it slow and steady at the rate of about one milliliter per minute to make it pain-free for our patients during administration. It's important to remember that patient factors such as their local anatomy and physiology can also affect the, how our local anesthetic is working. So sometimes patients could have additional nerve supplies which could make our local anesthetic not as effective. Sometimes they can have an infection in that area which would mean that we would then have to get rid of that infection for our local anesthetic to work more effectively. And this could be done by a surgical procedure called incise and drain, where we take the pus out of that area, or by giving them antibiotics for the infection, which could, if it's generalised. Now, sometimes the, you can have a very inflamed pulp or hyperemic pulp, which can make our local anaesthetic ineffective. In such cases, giving a different site of local anaesthesia, for example, instead of giving infiltration near the tooth, giving an ID block can make it more effective, or by changing the type of local anaesthetic that you're using, for example, instead of lignocaine, using articaine, might work more effectively for you. From time to time, I will find patients who are too anxious to have local anaesthetic in surgery. And it's very important that I manage these patients effectively. So their management starts from outside the surgery where I and my team help them, calm them, reassure them, and make sure that they're going to be well looked after. After that, I take them into surgery and I will make, acclimatize them to my surgery, make sure they understand my equipment and what I'm going to do and talk them through the procedure. It is important that they are comfortable and they have confidence in me. But sometimes, despite all my best efforts, it doesn't work. And in such cases, I have to refer them on to have additional procedures such as sedation or general anaesthetic to help calm their anxiety so as to have their dental procedure. In my experience, incorporating a few additional steps in my day-to-day -day practice has made it a fantastic journey, especially in pain management for my patients. One of the key things that I do every time is apply topical anesthesia on the area where I'm going to inject. Now, some researchers may argue that it doesn't work, whereas some people actually say that it works very well. But in my experience, it reassures the patient and it tells them I'm doing everything in my cap capability to make it comfortable for them. And that to me is key to success, as long as the patient understands that you are doing an extra step to make it comfortable for them. Using good quality needles has also changed the way I practice. Having a sharp needle entering into the patient's mouth is much less painful than having a blunt needle entering the patient's mouth. So it's important that we look at our needles and we use good quality needles. If you have a needle that is sharp and it contacts bone, it then bends. And if you reinsert this needle in the other part of the mouth, then you will find that it will cause more pain to your patients. And therefore it is important to swap needles between two different types of local anaesthetic. Additionally, using specialized needles, like, such as this, which would allow you to give better local anaesthetics. This particular needle is designed for better intraligamentary uh, injections and this will make it much less painful for your patients. The speed at which we inject our local anaesthetic cartridge inside the patient's mouth can also cause pain. Now it's important that we try and eliminate that and this can be done by using computer-aided devices that not only regulate 
the speed at which the local anesthetic is injected, but also the pressure at which this is going in, both of which we know cause pain to our patients. Now these devices are readily available in the market and they are very ergonomic to handle. More importantly, they look, look less threatening to our patients because they do not look like the traditional needle and syringes that our patients are so scared of. More importantly, because they are easier for me to handle, I can also inject in various difficult hard to reach places in the patient's mouth, which will allow me to also use it in cases where there's limited oral opening. I hope the tips that I've shared with you will allow you to better manage the pain journey with your patients and will make it easier for you to provide the fantastic care that you provide your patients, as do I. And I hope this has been useful in your day-to-day -day practice. Thank you for your time.